Hello, this is Sean or your Time Top or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be playing through my game that I put out about a year ago called Liminal Ranger. Uh, if you haven't played it already, play it or something. It's free on Itch.io. Yeah. Or you can watch me play it. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play this game. came out a year ago. Uh, let's just hop in. So, uh, to warn you, you are going to hear this a lot. And if you hear this noise, I don't know if you can hear it, that's my chair. It is the loudest chair in existence. So you'll have to forgive me for that. Anyway, this is the opening area. Uh, one comment I have about this is, uh, some players uh, were confused by this because that text at the top where it says press E to interact, I didn't have that initially. I don't know why. I just thought people would know to press E when they see the crosshair, so there's a streamer, someone left a review on my game, they're like, I can't even get down the stairs, this is the worst. Uh, it's just uh, this hidden little crosshair, I guess. I should have added that text above a long time ago, to be honest. Alright. So this is a character, them. Uh, I wanted this character to remain, like, projectable, I guess, for the character, or the player to decide the relation between this character and the player character. I don't know if I was super successful in that. And honestly, I don't even know if that's, uh, that works, but you know, I like keeping things back um, with that kind of thing. Ooh, ah. One art thing about this scene, oh, oops. One art thing about the scene is uh, the light being orange was like, I think I built this place like 75% before I realized, you know, this looks a bit sterile, so I cranked the light to be orange, and then suddenly like, it's like sunset kind of vibes, like late day almost, and I like that. Got a vent here. Here's my funny little acid view stuff. I mean, you know, it's normal. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. And this is the spooky scare, but it's not really scary to me at least. But some people say it's scary. Is that you? It's a goblin or something. It's a bad vibe. All right. <laughs> when a space loses itself, people can get lost in it. This game is, I don't want to say it's like a liminal space game, but I definitely use the word liminal in the title. I mean, it is a liminal space game in a way, but it's less about the aesthetics and more about, like, the emotions that the spaces have or contain in people's relationship and space to them. Uh, that's That was kind of the, the idea of this game. The other idea, of course, was that this game was going to be... Originally, it was going to be an immersive sim, but you lose powers instead of gaining them, because I would play Deus Ex or other immersive sims, Dishonored, whatever. Um, loved the worlds, loved all that stuff, but it's... Ooh. By the way, there's a game I found out after I made this game that has like this exact scene almost, but it came out before my game, which is always a bummer to see, but you know what? It's just the aesthetic, I guess. Alright, let's go. Anyway, it's uh, about immersive sims, but you're supposed to lose your power, because in those games, they just got easier and easier, I thought, as the game goes on, because you get invisibility and whatnot, and... I wanted to make a game where uh, you lose power uh, instead of gaining it, and I kind of pulled back on a lot of the immersive sim aspects as the game uh, went on. It was going to be like stealth segments originally. It was going to be on like one map, and when you did a path through the first time, uh, the entrances and doorways and passages you took would be like blocked off the next time, forcing you to like learn a new path or something. That was the original conceit, but I didn't. Uh, keep much of that other than the losing powers bit. Because I like that, that, the idea of that. But you also gain them, honestly. It's more like you specialize, I guess. The boss, who people say look like Prismo from Adventure Time. I like the way the cutscenes look in this game. I like the pixelated look. My next game will probably not have it. Um, I think it's nice and crunchy looking, personally. Oh, it's a neglected one. Uh, I like the 2D sprites, so I'm keeping that for my next game for sure, in a 3D world. Ah, wall climb. 
So, this tutorial area is a huge problem area in the game for me. I think it's a very sterile environment. Uh, initially, this whole area didn't even have this like texture here. Um, it was just like uh, just blue walls, and it looked very cheap, I guess. I mean, it was supposed to look sparse, I guess. Uh, and another big error with this tutorial is it kind of is not good at teaching you things. I should have had like some kind of button or something where you press it and you can get like a, a recap of a skill or whatever, so you could have relearned it. I added this text later, but I don't think it does enough. The pogo stick. This is... this tutorial is flawed in my opinion. I mean, once you get through it, I think the game... There's a few other problems I have with it, but... Uh, so the pogo stick, I like the feel of it. I think it's like janky, but like a fun janky, I guess. This whole game is a little um, rough around the edges, but that's kind of the appeal for me, I guess. It's a 3D platformer and you kind of have to learn the tricks of the movement and stuff. You know, the, the wall jump and whatnot. Uh, so this is an interesting tool because some people, when they have it, I'm just going to be brief about this, They'd like jump like this. I saw uh Jesse when he played my game do that. He was jumping. And I was like, no, you gotta, you gotta click, but I don't know, it says left click he said. People don't like to read. Uh, I'm I was uh, beta testing my new game with my uh, cousins and uh, and my brother and no one reads, so I need to figure out a way to teach without relying on words. Which, you know, I do later in this game, I do have non-verbal teaching. Oh, the coin. I'm pretty proud of the coin. This is kind of a coding miracle for me because uh, I only really got it to work super reliably, like, when the game is almost done. The hammer is kind of a tricky one. I think the hammer is, like, the jankiest item. Well, not janky. The most, like, insider item. Like, it's super powerful once you learn how to use it. Uh, but a lot of people, I think, they, uh, don't, uh, learn it very easily. Because the rules are a little nebulous. You jump while doing it, and then you fall when you're at the apex, or if you touch a wall. Or, if you're falling, you do it, and you have, like, unlimited. It's kind of tricky. This back pogo move is kind of a nightmare, if I'm being honest. If I were to completely overhaul this, it, the way it would work is you'd like do this and then maybe you'd like the camera would swivel and you could see like a trajectory of where you're going to land. You have to like aim it. Uh, because as is right now, it's like if you bring this, the pogo and the uh, spray bottle with you into the last level, that level is not fun. Straight up. Like, I think um, one of the oversights with this game is I didn't test some of the combos of items strongly enough. Because uh, personally, I never found much use in the spray bottle, but I know people like it, so... Uh, what's it called? Yeah, it ended up being, if you have the spray bottle in Pogo, that's like probably one of the worst combos in the game. You have to do some real trick shots with the Pogo. It's a little uh, aggressive. I added this encounter a little bit later just to add some more expansion to the world. I'm not talking about the writing much because, what's it called? I don't know, I'd, maybe I'll talk about it more later, but we'll see. It's a long-ish game and it's already 10 minutes. I hope you're treating this like a podcast or something, I don't know. If anyone's here, ooh, it's that vibe, okay. Find the doorway. Okay, this is where the non-verbal teaching moment stuff starts that I mentioned. Uh, I'll talk about the map real quick. This map is based off of a real-life place, uh, but shortened very aggressively to where it almost does not resemble the real-life location at all. This structure here is in the real-life place, but everything else is pretty much... I mean, this little corridor exists, but it is very shortened for the game. Soda cup. Mmm, bench. Oh. Mm. Let's go. I think the opening of this game might be too long. Maybe. I don't know. Another nonverbal teaching moment. You're like, hmm, what do I do here? Do I do this? No. There's no death sound. That was weird. 
Hmm, okay. That's weird. What do I do? Is it hammer? No. That's right, it's the spray bottle. Who would have thought? The stuttering that happens there is because I don't think I actually load anything until it happens. There's no loading in the game. So when the game stutters, it's uh, because it's loading in an asset for the first time. Fun fact. Ah. Oh yeah, I'd like to talk about this actually. I've seen people play this game, multiple people, where they get to this area. And personally, I always thought it was like, come out here. Wow, look at that big thing with lights. And then some people just immediately like turn around and they're like, what's up here? And I get it. And you know what? Uh, maybe it's not that bad, but some people get lost, I feel like, so. Maybe it might, might be my bad. Uh, another thing. I just have a lot to say, don't I? That's the point of the video. Okay. What was I gonna say? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's just jump up here before I forget anymore. What am I doing? Oh, there we go. This was a addition, these little like strips of a uh, carpet because some people didn't realize that you could jump up there when they were play testing, so I added that. Um Jump jump. Oh yeah, this is where the thumbnail of the game was taken. Although I took it like this, it bothers me because if I was retaking it. I would have the the bad vibe there lined up with the middle of the that pillar, but I didn't do that. Clown. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, I never added scroll wheel support for this game, so you can't really like flip through your uh, items that fast. And I think if you press these enough, you can kind of like glitch it to where two items are up at once. I guess it's not working right now, or not breaking. I guess. I guess it's working. Okay. Ooh, it's the first conversation of the hallway. I feel like this writing moment kind of lays on a little too much too fast, maybe? He just kind of, the hallway uh, goes at you and is like, I'm sad. It's like, okay, whoa, that came out of, I mean, that's a point, but I don't know. Maybe I could have softened it somehow. This guy gets a lot of people. The spray bottle has a really um, finicky aim and range. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go for the secret ending because, you know. That's right, this game has secret endings, isn't that great? Everyone loves secret endings. You pick up these little uh, glowing objects. And you can kind of see this one from up there. So let's pick it up, come on. There we go. Oh yeah, one thing I noticed about the font is I wanted to delineate uh, the character's thoughts versus like the collective unconscious, like speaking into your, the range of the brain, which is this font. That was the intent behind the two font choice. You got the nice, uh, whether it's the character's thought, it's the nice sans serif font, and then that's the uh, collective unconscious, it's that very robotic, not robotic, artificial looking font. Yeah, there you go. Let's get this guy. Oh yeah, technically I'm going the wrong way. I feel like I want the player to go to that one first, but you know. Either one works, to be honest. But that one is a better introduction, to be honest. All right, so let's spray. Spritz. Got him. So all the bad vibes in the game have like, I think four at most, like animations for like catching you. Which, you know, somehow I made that work, in my opinion. Lots of my opinions here. That's the point of the video. I should just have like a sign up that says that, okay. So, this first level, I think, has the massive failing of having a lot of bottomless pits that you just fall into. And somehow, the first level is the only level that has bottomless pits. I didn't, none of the other levels has bottomless pits, but this one. And for a level where you're supposed to be learning the platforming, it's incredibly frustrating. I don't know, yeah, it was a bad call. Uh, I'm gonna learn from that for my next game, which I keep mentioning, ooh. Okay, this is an interesting thing. Some people I saw playing, streaming this, uh, 
would walk in and then this little pickup objective would go in. Kind of have to like stand outside of it to pick it up. It's like a hitbox thing in Godot, I guess. I built this game in Godot. I like Godot a lot, actually, but uh, it is limited sometimes. I actually have a lot of problem with ray casts recently. Not to complain too much, but yeah, ray casts. Ooh. So as you're picking up each object, it's like kind of recalling one person's memory of the space. I didn't direct. No, I think later I directly mentioned that to them. Here we go, last one. This hallway is a place to hide away. So you're basically collecting objects that provide meaning to the space. Because liminal spaces are, you know, actual, the definition of liminal space is a transitional space uh, where people pass through and it's not like a permanent place. Is, um, I feel like if I'm imagining it, it feels kind of lonely. A place where no one stays, you're just kind of passing through. That's kind of where the inspiration just comes off of. My next game is also going to talk about spaces, but it's going to talk about a suburb uh, and the emotions around that. Which could lead to a lot of navel gazing in this. Alright, um, this is one of my favorite tracks. I like this one. Oh yeah, today it's pretty warm. This is one of the learning moments it's supposed to be. You jump up here with your pogo stick or whatever. Oh, there's a cup. I right. can pick it up. That's where you're supposed to learn how to do that. Alright. Look at all this. Nice. You know, the first level in my new game is also going to be pink. Just, I don't know. That's, uh... It's just kind of a surreal color, I guess. There is shape. Oh yeah, here's another thing. I'm trying to uh, plant in the player's brain, specifically for this area, that these tall plants mean that there's a soda cup nearby, which is uh, mostly because that one, I feel like, is a pretty hard one to find without this hint that something might be in there. Let's use the coin more. I love the coin. <gasps> okay, that was a gasp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a deathless run. That's right. That's how good of a gamer I am. World's best gamer. Okay, I'm getting stupid, and it's only 17 minutes in. This video should hopefully be an hour under. This uh, this section of the game is super. Uh, linear? No. Like, obvious, I guess. Like, I really want people in this first level to use all of your items, so that part there is because, um, honestly, you don't really smash glass panes that much in this game. I don't think you smash, like, any in the third level. So, yeah. I mean, the third level had a huge redesign, uh, at one point. Really massive. Um, Oh, let's show off a secret, why don't we? I had like the third area, which you'll see soon. I had like a, a w one side set up and it just was horrible, so I got rid of it entirely. Oh no! Oh. We're gonna see the secret. Oh. 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 Wait, there goes my deathless run. Oh my god. Wow. Time to throw this whole video out and start over again. Anyway. Oh yeah, the coin has like a thing where like if you're too close to something you can't flick it forward, so that was to stop people from shooting into a wall. This is for my friend Takaiju. He said, put a monkey in the game. So I said, okay, word up. Word up? Why did I say that? I was like possessed or something. Okay. Return to inhabitant. Sounds good. I never say word up. Why did I say word up? Okay. It's gonna keep me up at night. <laughs> Why did I say that? Okay. I found everything. Yes, those- yeah, I do point it out. The memories. I 
wonder from an outside perspective how people who aren't me and don't know anything about this game come into this game. How do they like react to like the, the story and stuff and the writing? Um, because I feel like, I don't know if I'm throwing too much at them or if it's actually like a perfectly fine amount. I'm not the best gauge of that. I feel like it's not that bad. Welcome back. Yes. It's impossible, yes. This is a... This level is inspired by one of my fascinations of space as well, which is office parks. I don't know why, I just find them interesting. I saw an office yesterday while on a walk, and like... I know it's a wealth management office, so I should be like, ew, gross. Money, no, I can Uh... But it was a nice office, man. It had like outdoor staircase to like an outdoor seating area and like one of those coves where like the windows are, oh, okay. Get rid of the spray bottle, it's not the best, in my opinion. All right, let's go. Anyway, that was a nice building I saw and that I half told you about. I feel like um, sometimes I like things because they're boring. Well, not because they're boring. That's not a good way to put it. Hotel Avella. I like this uh, little area here. I would sit here probably. Oh, here's a fun fact. Uh, for people who are learning 3D, see how the chair legs get like really uh, heavily shaded when I get close to them? That's because I didn't put loop cuts close enough to the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the, the leg there. And I turned on smooth shading and for some reason, the way edges work with smooth shading is you really, if you want a sharp edge, you have to put a a uh, loop cut there. Look at that keyboard. Did I make that keyboard model? I don't know. I made a lot of things for this game. Okay. And for Suburban Runner, my next game, I'll make a lot more. My next game. Maybe I'll crowdfund it, we'll see. Boy, this video is like a... Did I already make this joke? I feel like I'm going to make a joke I already made. This video is a... I believe the term is PSYOP. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, to implant the knowledge that I'm going to make a new game. You've been tricked. So this is the first area of this new level. This is the room. I upgraded the coin, I think. Yeah, it goes a lot further. The coin's kind of another trick. Oh! The coin is kind of a tricky one because this one relies on... Uh, a lot of, like, oh, frame drops. Brutal. Okay. It relies on, like, you running and jumping to really, like, get a good throw. Ooh. Which is another one of those, like, kind of janky or rough around the edges aspect of this game. Which I'm okay with. This area, to be honest, it's kind of ugly. <laughs> Which is good because it's not the whole level. Okay, so this is the first like bottleneck where I wanted the player to like experience what it was like to uh, not have one of your items. So it's super linear and super obvious what is happening here. So if you got rid of your hammer, this area of course would be blocked off and then you'd have to go over here and do this. Ooh. If you didn't use your, if you got rid of your coin, you can't get through this area because this area requires you to like you know, do this. Oh. Damn it. There we go. Boom. Look, this area is just... Mm -mm. And this is an area where if you didn't have a spray bottle, it's a little harder for you because uh, there's a lot of uh, bad vibes in this area. I have no regrets for calling the enemies in this game bad vibes. Oh yeah, down here there's like a cove in them. You know, people who are spray bottle players, I don't know, they just like, they get it in their head, they're like, I'm gonna just destroy every single last bad vibe. And then they go like out of their way to like, especially in that one down there, to just spray as many of them as they humanly can. It's funny. Oh yeah, fun fact about these cones of vision. They don't have like any, uh, what's it called? They don't get stopped by a wall. So, like, technically, if you were down there where the coin is, you'd still be, uh, seen 
by the bad vibe. Who knows? Oh, this is a classic game design technique that I learned. It's a it's a big wall, uh, and you like navigate it like this because I think when you ooh, ooh, oh there we go. When you go to this point, everything behind you disappears for optimization. To be honest, I don't even know if it was that much of a performance increase to do that, but you know what, why not? I learned that from Paradise Killer, I think. I think uh, the devs were talking about that. I heard it in a few places. Paradise Killer is cool, I like Paradise Killer. It's a good game. So the hotel's dying. We got an abandoned room here. Purposeless. Light switch in a chair. Which were, they were uh, in the hotel room, I believe. I like this level a lot. I think my only problem with it is it's almost too bright where I had to make the hand, which used to be like just a bright white light. I had to make it uh, blue, slightly blue, so it would actually like show up. Which I think aesthetically, I don't know, it's like Donald Duck's eyes, man. Donald Duck, he has like slightly blue eyes. God, I can't take it in there. Yeah, me neither, buddy. Okay. Is that patronizing? Okay. That was a trick shot. Did you see that? Oh my god. You saw that, right? If you have this video in another tab, I want you to go back 30 seconds or whatever and watch me land that coin shot because that was really good. And I think you should see that. You know? I'm talking to you. I know you're watching. No, I don't know you're watching. I can't presume anything. Can I make this? This is just the coin trick shot channel now. Oh, okay, you gotta come back. Open the tab up. <laughs> okay. Here comes another trick shot for the legends. Oh my god, I'm unstoppable. Did you see that? <laughs> okay, sorry. That was... I'm impressed with my trick shots there. The coin uh, doesn't actually like head dead center of your screen. I think it actually like leans one way or another. Oh yeah, most of these areas I wanted like you to see one of these objects like really easily before I, the hidden ones are revealed. So that area, uh, each like little house with the light switch in it glows purple. And that was my, me trying to like, like the plants kind of uh, put it in your brain like, oh, okay. This area, however, I do not hint with any objects next to the uh, the sofas, that there might be a sofa there, which is kind of a design inconsistency, to be honest. Look at these two chairs. Think about them. Okay. I like in an open world game, uh, when you can see objects where you're like, oh man, I love that they just placed two items there. Infra, uh, this game on Steam called Infra, is like a master class of placing, oh no. A master class of like placing random objects to make an area feel lived in. Like, Infra's seriously a huge inspiration to me. That game is, uh, the exploration focus is just so good, man. And more people need to talk about it. It's good. It's really good. Okay, yeah, there's one up here. Ah! It doesn't work. Jump. Jump. Now we're running. Oh, this is one of my favorite songs. This level and You know what, honestly, if I had to pick my favorite world for music, I think the first world's the worst. The third world is my favorite, and this world is in the middle. But this one has some good songs in it, I think. Sometimes I get in a songwriting mood where I like remember that I can write songs. I well, not remember, but like, I feel like I have uh, periods where my music is not good. And then luckily for this game, I feel like I, uh, oh, that, wow, okay. That was amazing. That was a trick shot again. The trick shot in this game. I'm honestly super proud of the coin. I think it is one of my favorite like items because it just feels 
good to use. Oh yeah, fun fact. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was after or while I was making the game, I thought, I was considering uh, you had to collect one of these glowing items and like bring them back to a doorway to like save them. So it would have added a little bit more challenge where not only do you have to get it, you have to um, bring it back to a doorway. And it would have added like a risk reward system where it's like, yeah, you could collect all four in one go, or you could be a little more careful and um, save each one. But at the end of the day, I don't want to take up too much time in anyone's schedule. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you could be doing outside of playing a video game. And if you played my game or bought my game or anything, like, very huge thank you. Super huge thank you. I'm honored that you would. Alright, let's go. I'm gonna beat this in like 50 minutes. I found everything. This level actually, slight inconsistency, the last level would automatically talk to the dude uh, when you uh, finished a task. And for some reason in this one, I, I make the player press E on the guy instead of uh, just automatically triggering it. And it's only in this level that happens. Kind of weird. That's right. That's right. How uplifting. I always feel kind of weird writing solutions to like emotional or problems because it's just sometimes it feels a little too like tidy. It's like, oh, of course, I just needed to realize this because personally, I've ex the way I find it is it's never that easy. It's never just like a thought in your head, like flip a switch and you're fine. Um, my next, I keep saying my next game might, but you know, I don't want to promise too much. I don't want to become, let's think of a game. I'll just use the obvious one, No Man's Sky. Okay. Gamer moment of me. Gamer moment. Okay. Bang up job. People say that. Here's the last item trade. Bye, pogo stick. Hello, hammer. Ah, the thematic loop. This is why the opening exists. You go back to the corridor in which you lost them. Ooh, now it's all spooky. It's red. Can you wall jump in this stuff? No, you can't. Let's see, yeah. Let's go. Oh, <gasps> something unexpected. Let's see here. Oh my gosh, is it them? I just asked that, buddy. Step off. Okay. Boy, this is what it would be like if I was a tuber, I guess. Luckily, I'm not a tuber. I'm gonna make animations on YouTube. Oh! I have to talk and talk about this. One of my fascinations that I love dearly so much is underlit trees. I just love when I'm out and about. It's night. And there's trees, and they put lights under them. Nothing speaks to my soul stronger than the tree with a light under it. It is so nice. Oh, this part's cool. I like this part. This part was actually going to be a lot more gamey, but I decided to make it more of an experience, I guess. Oh, boy, clipping. Okay. More of an experience where it's like, ooh. I'm in the dark, and the shadows of bad vibes are kind of walking around. I like the effect. That's cool. Seem like ghosts. Underlit trees, though, once you start noticing that stuff and appreciating it, it's so good. Trust me. This is a spooky corridor, am I right? No! You know, I wonder if anyone's... You know what? I'm not going to presume anything. I can't. Assume, presume. Is there a difference between those two words? Who knows? I could just Google it, but I ask it anyway. Oh, this is like my favorite level area of music aesthetics. I really, really like this area. Man, they say write what you know. Okay. I 
I saw this thing on, uh, I'm gonna talk about a personal attack, I think. Very personal, very attacked. Uh, on TikTok, which I used because I created PB here and then I, I should have uninstalled the app after I finished it, but I didn't. And now I'm using it. But I saw this like stereotype that some people were talking about where everyone was saying all indie games are just about being sad. And like, I feel like that's untrue. Look, I just, you know, I, one of the things I do a lot in my games in, uh, what's it called? Art direction wise, is I like to have like postcard moments where, um, it's like, I don't know, like this is another postcard moment. This postcard moment. <laughs> You know, where you see a scene and you're just like, whoa, that looks like a image, all right? Yes. Ooh, this song has lyrics in it. This loop is tricky. Um, only, like, so the way it plays, music-wise, because I know people can get sick of music loops, and honestly, the music loops in this game are already a little short. Like, they're only a minute at most, so I hear it, it loops a lot. Um... This one loops with the lyrics once, and then loops without lyrics once. So, I don't know if that was a good compromise. So this, if you have the pogo, this area is horrible. I mean, it's like a final boss. Think about it like that. But it's very hard. And you have to be very good at it very fast, because these things are meant for if you're a, you're a pogo user. Because uh, you're supposed to, you know, bounce backwards all the way over there. and. There's something about the coding, and I should have explained it or something, but like the distance at which you stand from the wall affects the strength of your pushback. And counterintuitively, the further away from the wall you stand, the stronger the pushback is. I think if I were to go back and redo this game, I would make the pogo, that, that secondary ability for the pogo just needs a lot of love, a lot of work. Ooh, I like this area a lot, super surreal. I love uh, strange and trippy things. You know, I'm not going to use this because I want to be able to respond back over there. Zoom. Oh. Okay. This is kind of a tricky thing. You fit right in here. You're very compact. Skateboard. I feel like there's things I want to say. Oh, this is a fun thing. Check this out. Boom. Ha! Ah, nice! Alright. This is another nightmarish jump on the pogo stick. Like, you can make it from that platform over the shoulder into this area, but it feels impossible. Or you can kind of like curve around it. It's- this is- pogo stick players, I salute you. You're brave. You're very brave. Oh yeah, you can do like a synergy too, I like this. Boom. Let me drop. Okay. Oh yeah, the scroll wheel. If I had the scroll wheel, I feel like there's a lot more of these like synergies you could use. The coin and hammer in particular, you can get, ooh. You can get pretty far, I feel like. Especially if you're doing the falling plus the coin. This is just turned into a pro strats guide. I think I should talk more about the game and the art direction and stuff. Okay, so this level, the conceit is, uh, this, uh, this space is kind of stuck in this limbo of overwhelming bad vibes, broken hallways sticking out. Uh, this is like the, 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 the bad thoughts, I guess. And then this, is, this side is supposed to be the ideal, like the, the pleasant valley. Um, but there's bad vibes crawling out of it, of course. Yeah, that's that was the conceit of this level. The conceit. Is that me using that word right? I feel like I used a lot of words and I like three four sixths two thirds understand them. There we go. I can use them in a sentence, but if you ask me to define it, I can't. Oh I don't have a spay bottle. Dang. I was wishing for the spay bottle there. I've heard comments that this level is a bit aggressive, uh, in terms of difficulty. It is not easy. And uh, I believe it. I think they must have been a pogo stick player. Pour one out for the pogo stick players. I don't know what one is, but... 
Oh yeah, the coin is so useful, I swear. And look, you can just boom them back. It's so good. Okay, let's get that third hidden item. This is probably the most obvious hidden item. I do and don't regret the secret ending thing. Because in the story, I think it makes sense that these are hidden items. Um, and as a ranger, as a character, part of the deal with working with the collective unconscious is that, um, you know, you keep an eye out that the opportunity is going to fall into your lap to find the one you lost. Or some, yeah. The new game's gonna have some expansions to the, to the lore. I like this area a lot. It looks nice, okay. Uh-oh, please don't. Good question. The third one is surprisingly hard to find in my opinion. Actually, let me just jump up here and All right, I'm gonna save my space up here. Boom. Drop the coin. <gasps> We're good. Boom. Gamer strategies. All right, let's, oh! Oh no, you can't, okay. I was about to say, you can see the edge of the world. Let's do this. Coin. Let's see if I don't have to climb that structure at all. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm gasping again. Ooh. Okay. Okay, uh, let me, before this game ends, you know what, I'll just talk at the end about the game, if anyone's still interested. Wow, highly embarrassing. Oh yeah, the coin on this part is pretty brutal, but that's the boss fight, you know? The only, th the only item in this game that is easy, or makes the game like 10 times easier, is the hammer. It just makes the game so much easier. Like, once you learn how to use it though, I guess that's the hard part of it. Did I not collect it? Oh, it's right there. I missed it. How embarrassing. Oh, okay, okay. You know, if I was smart, I would have dropped a coin there. Unfortunately, I'm not. Alright, here we go. Boom. And let's go. Let's take a vacation. No. Rancid vibes. Absolutely rancid. No. Rancid is kind of a funny word. I just want to. This video has completely and utterly devolved into nonsense. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the video game that I'm playing right now. Listen up. Uh, I don't know. It's 43 minutes in. If you've made it this far, like, why would why would you leave now, right? Maybe this is where it starts getting good. This is where I start dropping, like, the, the galaxy brain thoughts. That's true. That's true. I can't say so true to my writing. Okay. That's illegal. Alright, so, we're at the end of the game. Once I go in this door, we're gonna get the, quote, true ending. Uh... And it's gonna be over. So let's do that and maybe I'll talk for like, I'll limit myself to five minutes. If I can't think of anything then, it's, it's too late. Ha. Ah. Ooh. Hmm. Oh. Where am I? This is one of my favorite tracks for the game. It's very simple, but it just kind of sounds pleasing to me. Ooh. Oh. Ah. It's them. I, okay, if I had a house, I would have a huge painting or a huge picture of clouds. I would just have them. I don't know why, I just think that'd be kind of a, kind of a, a 
I almost said Mood, but it's not 2016 anymore. That was a 2016, right? Seven saying Big Mood, that was a thing. Okay. As corny as that sounds, very defensive. Very defensive of me. You can't run in this area. I like the way the light works. Shout out to Grickle for inspiring this uh, multi-tiered floor thing. It's a new Grickle Patreon video. How many times have we mentioned Grickle in my YouTube? I don't know. Okay, let's go. Let's go. The true ending has the worst... Oh, it's so bright, I can't see anything. Okay. The true ending has the... In my opinion, the... the the inferior ending song to the other ending, which I think is my form of payback for people who collect the normal ending. I just feel bad for anyone who beat the game, they spent more than an hour on it, and it says you got the normal ending. And their joy of like, oh my god, I beat the game is replaced with like a, oh, normal ending? <laughs> I'm very sorry. But for the record, it is completely possible to get the good ending on the first try. I found you in the lobby amongst the clouds and I felt happy that we met again after so long in all the places and all the faces on the wall. So now let's go. Wow. And then the game's over. You got the true ending. Really? Oh my goodness. Say it ain't so. The out of three mementos. Please consider joining on the Itch.io page. Uh, here's a shout out to any Itch.io developers. Uh, if you're making a game and the game is over and finished, I think it is totally valid to uh, remind people that if they enjoyed it, and if they wish to, they can donate. Uh, I don't know, I feel like uh, this game specifically, a lot of very nice people donated, and I am very thankful for them. Uh, yeah, and I hopefully if you watch this video all the way through, uh, all 50, I'll go for 54 minutes, yeah. All 54 minutes of this video, uh, you are a trooper, you are a uh, soldier, but like, you know, like a, a video watching. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna talk about the game, I guess, my, my final conclusions about the game. I'm really proud of this game overall, I'm proud of uh, pretty much everything about it, and you know, there's things in this game that aren't perfect and could use more polishing, but I think I made this game in the space of like two months? or two to three maybe. I started working on it uh, while I was doing the ending of PB here. So I don't, you'd have to do the math on that. I think that's two months. But um, for a game like this, I, I'm really proud of it. Um, the music, the visuals, the writing, the aesthetic package. And I'm happy that uh, people enjoy it because uh, I've, I've seen a lot of positivity for it. Um, my next game is going to be in the same universe as this. I feel like I'm going to take a lot of the lessons I learned from this game uh, and uh, hopefully do great things. Um, it's going to be a parkour-based game because I love Mirror's Edge, so I really want to make a, a faster-paced, kind of more active gameplay, but also still add accessibility options to make the game more playable for people who maybe aren't into the, the fast-paced action gameplay. It'll be interesting. Um, I'm really proud of this game. I can't think of anything that I want to add right now. Maybe I'll think of something later, but at that point, it's, uh, it's, it's game over. It's game over, the game is over. And maybe I'm gonna end this a little earlier than 54 minutes, so I take it back, not 54 minutes. Again, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope I wasn't uh, too stupid and I didn't shatter the image of me that you held in your brain. All right.
Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. That was a very self-conscious thing for me to say at the, the, the last minute. Very self-conscious. Sorry. <laughs>